So welcome everybody to SHA 2017. If this is your first talk, welcome. If this is not your first talk, welcome as well. Uh, we're going to talk today about command and control centers for malware and botnet systems and how you can uh, attack those instead of having to patch your system all the time. This is the future. We are here now. Future is now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The future is now. Uh, welcome, Senat Aruk, for this talk, and have a warm welcome for him, please. Okay, so thanks everyone for coming in to today, tonight. I don't know, it's tonight. So, and I, this is a free solarium, right? So, uh, too bright. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I'm sorry about this, but I didn't know that I cannot use the white slide. So, a little bit about myself. So, I'm born in Macedonia. Uh, so, yeah, I survived three wars. <laughs> so, I, like everyone else here, I believe, so I start hacking. And I publish a lot of hacks so far. Um, but most important ones, uh, and with a number, most of them are heavily for the command and control centers. Currently, I'm living and working in Amsterdam, in Netherlands. So yeah, today we're going to, I'm going to speak about four famous botnets, even if there is more than 20 research, but we don't have a time. But you can find all of them in the SHA 2017 webpage, so you can download the whole PDF and you have more info there. And also I'm going to disclose the Vodafone Netherlands, the fiber optic internet router, which they call Drytech hack. So basically they, close the option about the bridge mod. <laughs> I don't know why. And yeah, I figured out how to open it again. So I, of course, I report this. So they patch it, but if you have a older version of firmware, then you can still trick them and you can put your router on the bridge mod. So uh, yeah, first of all, family and friends. Yeah, my son and daughter, because research requires a lot of time and I'm stealing always from their free time. So without them, it's not possible to make anything because if they are not forgiving their time, then there will be no research, right? Like everyone else. So, oops, my clicker. Today, we go, I'm going to speak again, again the, against the, so the botnets. I'm going to speak about why we still suck at malware infections. Then I'm going to speak about the CryptoLock, right? The one of the first ransomwares in the world since 2014-15. So where I managed to break in inside of this botnet, well, the attack was ongoing, right? So we revealed a lot of stuff we share with, with community and stuff like that. Then I'm going to reveal also the uh, man in the browser. So all we know that to be able to make a credit card Still or malware, you must have a man in the middle browser attack to bypass the second factor, right? So right now in the underground, there is a man in the middle browser builder, right? So you can build your own man in the middle browser attack against any bank you like in the world. It's so easy. Then I'm going to speak about the NAS botnet, which was uh, very interesting, right? Full autopilot mode where they were hacking the NAS, but, uh, NAS devices, network attached storage devices uh, from the vendor QNAP. They were hacking them, arming them, and then patching them again. So to be sure that no one else was going to hack them again, right? <laughs> so it was an infinite loop. And then I'm going to speak about the Keynes family of malware, right? Especially for the uh, banking Trojan, which has a really interesting web, uh, let's say electronic banking application, right? Which is better than I'm using here, like uh, from the ABN AMRO, right? <laughs> so they build better uh, web application for electronic banking. Uh, so first of all, you, uh, why we are still getting hacked and why all this ransomware is outside, right? Because what we all are doing 
is to uh, we are putting a defense in that way. So we are putting a defense in that liars in our com in our companies or in our homes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we are trying to protect our endpoints from the malware attacks, right? But we are missing something here. The defense in depth works with two fundamental logic. First one is it allows the non-good files to pass in and it blocks the non-bad files to get in, right? The biggest problem here is the unknown files. We know what happened with the WannaCry ransomware. We know, we know what happened with every single zero-day attack that came in, like a fresh malware, right? Why? Because this piece of code was unknown. So there was no disposition for this piece of malware. For that reason, all these defense technologies couldn't stop them, right? Did you guys ever saw a zero-day attack, which is a non-good, which is a non-bad, right? Then it's not zero-day, right? Everything which is zero-day must be unknown. And unfortunately, these technologies today, if we don't have a proper sandboxing and if we don't have a proper uh, good and real-time threat intelligence, we cannot fight them, right? Another reason why we are still uh, behind of the bad guys is that we still believe that malware on the network is a malware, right? This is a pickup of the malware, and this is the same malware which is active on the endpoint, right? So what do you think, guys? Which one is the malware here, left one or right one? Come on, left, right? Perfect, yes. Yeah, malicious activity, mal malicious software, right? It must be active to do a malicious stuff. I don't know what is happening. Well, <laughs> yes. So, unfortunately, yes, we are trying to fight these zero day attacks only from the network side, which will not help us. So we must be on the endpoint. That's what we are seeing on the, on the market last, last couple of years. So now coming to the botnets, this, I don't know why this is going so fast. So, uh, in 2013, there was a, Crypto Locker, right? We all know one of the first, let's say, publicly uh, ransomware, right? That time when they start to deliver the malware, uh, we received some intelligence that time, and I had the CNC server. So what we are doing is like, we receive some threat intelligence and we are building our IP reputation tables to stop that CNC traffic. And then if we have the malware piece of code, we can do a reverse engineering and stuff like that to figure out what the malware is doing. And based on that, we are building a signatures to block it, right? So that's all the cybersecurity researchers are doing, right? Some of them, like me, we, I'm not interested too much about the malware, right? I'm interested the CNC server that he's speaking about. That's what's my focus on all my researchers, right? I really want to be inside their houses and to see what they are doing. That was my main aim on all my researchers, right? I wanted to unlock their logic. I wanted to see how, how the CNC server looks like. I wanted to see the functionality. I wanted to see what they stole from the victims and stuff like that. So the infection process, we all know about this specific malware, especially the ransomware. It was an email, right? It was coming with an attachment, and that atta at attachment had a macro code, uh, which was forcing the malware to connect to CNC server, et cetera, et cetera. But what's important is inside of the CNC server, right? So when, I, when I'm doing a botnet research, the first thing that I'm trying to figure out is where is the CNC server hosted, right? Mainly they're hosting on the compromised web server, right? No one will not buy a legal uh, web server from GoDaddy and to publish a CNC server, right? So they are hacking this shared host or dedicated host, and they're deploying the CNC server there, right? So to be able to figure out, first thing you need to do is to find a way, to find the same way how they hack the web server to deploy the malware, right? So they figure out some vulnerability on that server, web server, they deploy the CNC server, and they're serving the CNC server, right? So first thing is you need to realize how they hack their web server so you can use the same techniques to hack their CNC server. Right? So they are smart, right? Especially if it's a, a shared host, what they are doing is uh, they're going to hack some web server, which is a WordPress, 
or some CMS system, right? But they are going to deploy the CNC server on another vhost, which has only HTML web server, right? So when you are going to check, you will say, okay, there is a HTML, there is nothing uh, uh, vulnerable on this web server. But basically that means that they didn't hack that virtual host. They hacked some another virtual host, but then they had a root access. So they saw all hosted web pages on, the, on that shared host. And they put the CNC server on the non-vulnerable web, right? So they're doing this kind of tricks, th this kind of tricks to hide the traces. When I penetrate to this CNC server, I saw that there is a two configuration. One was the admin and one was the user, right? The most important thing was that they have our own configuration files, right? Oh, this, is, this doesn't look good, but this is a form where they can configure about how much money they're going to ask from them, right? This is a configuration page. I'm logging in, I'm going to define my HTML file, you know, the ransom, where they're going to ask the ransom. I'm going to define, define which countries I'm going to attack. I'm going to define how much is my amount that I'm going to request for the ransom, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'm going to click a submit. Here on the right page, I can see how my attack looks like. On the second one, I'm going to configure the decryption, right? So I'm going to upload my decry decryption application. I'm going to define the main URL, the support, how they're going to log in, et cetera, et cetera. Right, so this is their backend, real backend from their CNC servers. Then, of course, to deliver the attack, I need to have an email account, right, to make a mass uh, phishing attacks, right? So what I figure out inside, that there was a lot of mails, a lot, and they had a mails from Dutch people, they had a mail from UK citizens, they had a mail from the uh, Germany, etc. So they had all uh, classified mail folders for every single country. And most important, they have already a lot of SMTP credentials stolen to use on the, on the mass spam campaign. So this is a infected users, right? So every single user here is a machine, infected and encrypted, right? Uh, so far that time, there was a 2,000 and something infection, right? The another thing was is that the email addresses used for this phishing campaign for ES Spain, uh, Spain there was 2,580 email addresses. For Great Britain, there was 12,000 for Italy and for Netherlands, right? So they have a very nice and very narrow victim target, right? Based on the country and based on their language, et cetera, et cetera. And what also I saw inside is that they are keeping uh, support, right? When you are asking them to unlock your files, when you are telling them that you pay the ransom, et cetera, et cetera. So they have some kind of ticket in portal. But what I saw in the ticket in portal is was that a lot of people paid and they didn't receive the decryption, right? So this is a proof from their side, from their data, that they are not providing a decryption case. So everything was there. So they built their own system for delivering the ransomware. Now, uh, the second very interesting and very dangerous CNC server was the man in the middle browser builder, right? So we all know to, 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 to steal a credit card information and to transfer our money, you really need to have a very good developer, right? You must have a man in the middle browser attack. You must bypass the second factor, right? You must have some zero day exploitation. You must have a privilege escalation to be able to steal the money from the user, right? And as per today, it was very tough job for uh, underground guys to build a man in the middle browser attack, right? Because they must know the web application of the bank. They must analyze it very well. And based on that, to build a man in the middle browser plugin that they can deliver to the malware, right? Today, it's very easy. So this is uh, 
in the case of the compromised internal details, which I don't, I will not bother you too much because again, my focus is on the CNC server itself, right? So we know that this CNC server is used by Kins, by Zeus, and the blocks is supporting these two exploit kits, let's say. This was the login page of this CNC server, right? So they put a big bill of the money, right? So they, they're very, <laughs> they love their job, right? <laughs> I mean, he lost a time to find this kind of picture and to put it on the CNC login page, right? I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm really sorry from this white here, but this is a, this is their web, uh, this is their web application backend. Here, you can define the attack campaign. You can, you can see how many online bot victims you have. You can see how many offline bot victims you have, right? So you can build for every specific bank a man in the middle browser attack who's going to bypass the second factor. Here you can edit the functionality of the MMD, so of the of the of the of the blocks, right? I don't know if you guys can see it or not. That's very bad. Then you need to read my PDF. <laughs> so uh, the in these blocks here, basically, what they can do is that they, they can define which victim groups will belong for the which bank. So they can build the man in the middle blockchain attack for that bank and they can push that configuration to the, to the malware itself, right? So it's full automatic, right? I mean, so uh, they deploy the dropper, right? The dropper checks their book bookmarks, it checks their geolocation, it says to CNC server, hey, I have an Italian, Italian PC here, Italian guy, he has a bookmarks for, I don't know, in terms of Sao Paulo Bank and some another bank, right? So give me, I mean, in the middle browser attack for these banks. And from here, they're pushing this kind of stuff, right? So he don't need to go and to do anything manual. It's just everything here. Everything is on the portal. Then what they are doing, right? So for every single block, they can generate a command, right? So they have a go command. Is they're allowing the victim to reach the original banking application. They have a question, they can build a question, you know, they must delay. So th uh, they must show the victim that the money is transferred between the Bob and Alice, but in background is going to Bob to Joe, right? To do this, they're tricking everything. So tricking, you, are, you are asking a question, you can push you an error question, you can push you a ton JavaScript, uh, you can halt the function, the uh, transaction button, right? They can show you some error tricks, they can kick you out from the banking, right? Because they don't want you to log in and to see that money went somewhere else. So they can keep you on hold, right? And they can confirm with the fake messages and then you can forward you to the different page, right? So everything is configurable. Everything was configurable actually in this CNC server. You don't need to be a coder anymore, right? <laughs> so just go here, pay them some fee. You have a man in the middle browser build builder, go somewhere else. I don't know, buy the milkers, uh, deploy your malware, and you are ready to go. And then what, what we have here, it was a custom injections, right? Because the most biggest problem that they are facing is the one-time passcode, right? The second factor. And to bypass that, they have a special section where they can trick you to enter your second password, OTP password. You know, they're all one minute, right, length. So for the one minute that you are designing, you are designing here, the system will ask you the OTP, you are putting your OTP, you don't know why it's asking you OTP, right? And then they're taking that code and they're transferring the money. So we are not safe, right? <laughs> Even with OTP, we are not safe with this kind of stuff. I can see very nice faces <laughs> from the light here. <laughs> so the another botnet was the QNAP NAS, right? The network attached storage. We all know the shell shock attack, right? It was famous. But using the shell shock attack, they hacked, a, I don't know how many thousand of these QNAP NAS servers, right? But they built the attack in that way, that way it was a fully automatic, right? Uh, they needed to infect just one QNAP device. And then that QNAP device was infecting other QNAP devices, <laughs> right? It was really nice. 
So what was happening? It was that they, they were deploying the, uh, per, first of all, they are making a mass, massive shell shock vulnerability attack, right? Then they are deploying the payload. Then they are patching against the shell shock. They don't want this, this device to get hacked by another, uh, somebody else. So they are patching them. They are putting a, a DDoS application inside. And they are deploying the scanner who are going to scan and who are going to hack other botnet devices. The QNAP devices, sorry. This is the IDS al alert, right? When we saw the QNAP device, the QNAP alert. Then this was the payload hosted on the compromised web server. Then from there, I came to the DDoS server itself. It's an ELF script, right? Learning, running from Linux. It's executable, actually, right? Yeah. Doing uh, DDoS attacks. They put a HT HTML backdoor on CGI script, right? So they can control the, the infection. But most important was it was just automatic. Everything was going automatic. So of course, we report the up and that time and they patched and stuff like that but a lot of devices still vulnerable because they patched the vulnerability right so they own the device and they're patching the vulnerability so last cnc server if you remember i mentioned better than the <laughs> abn armor right it was a kin mal kin's malware by the way this is the victims here this you can see how much money they have in their accounts here right and what's the good, what was the most dangerous thing of this CNC server was that you are dis deciding like, okay, take money from this victim, send to my crook, the dropper, let him to keep 20% <laughs> and transfer the money back to my account. Here we can see how you can de de define the drops, right? So they have a full management of crooks, how much money they receive, which is their drop, uh, the reason of of the drop, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It was a full. I mean, it's like a ABN armor, you know. When I'm transferring the money to pay my bills, it's same, <laughs> right? And it's faster than ABN armor. <laughs> Here, they can see all the error logs, right? They care about their system. They want to know why the transfer is not done, right? I'm really sorry that you guys cannot see this, but that's it. Here you can define all the transfer pages, and most important, here you can add a new drop, a new crook. So you're putting his name, his EBAN number, his, uh, all his information, and you're defining the split with him, how much you're going to give to him, and then you are ready to go. Right. So everything is full automatic. And here is the transfers. So basically you can see from which, you can say for this crook, take the amount of money from this, victims and then the reason for the money transfer was like a payment of rent it was just random words that i found inside like okay buying something payment of rent payment of holiday and stuff like that but the actual user you know is not seeing that because of the man in the middle of rob show attack because of the previous cnc server so that was all for today for tonight <laughs> Uh, there is more botnet research articles that i done, which more details and better picture. <laughs> so I encourage you guys to go and read them. They're really nice and very informative. So last thing for tonight was the Vodafone hack, right? So what happened a little bit, very fast. I purchased a Vodafone fiber optic internet at my home. So the device itself is nothing, right? It's keeping the net for me. It's routing for me, right? Meanwhile, by the way, I work for Cisco. <laughs> So meanwhile, I got hired by Cisco and they give me a free gear, right, at home. And what happened, that gear that I had at home, it has a sandboxing capability, address malware protection, all the good stuff that Cisco has. And I wanted to take the NAT to my Cisco device to put this router here on the bridge mode so I can have a control over my traffic. What happened, I went to the router's configuration page and on under the nothing page there was nothing about the bridge i went to the google a lot of google translate because i don't speak a dutch <laughs> so i end up in a dutch forum and i was google translate all the time and i saw that the bridge mode functionality is active through ip right but vodafone netherlands disabled it so they don't want you to use a net right i don't know why they claim some security issues but i don't think so and then of course for me, it was start the <laughs> it's time to start digging in, right? Let's see what is happening. 
So what happened? I log into my Vitex. I went to the DMZ host, right? Here, as you can see, I don't have a place to define a MAC address, which will going to be my net. So what I done, it was simple. I just figure out the post get, post command, by the way. So as you can see here, this 7C0191, this is my MAC address. And the switch here now one, what is happening, okay, is my true IP enable. If you just want, make a one that, and just forward the intercepted post, and you have a net, which Vodafone Netherlands don't want you to have it, right? For the guys who don't know what is a burp suite and stuff like that, I have a better option. Just go, if you can go, just go to inspect elements. We all know this. This is uh, Safari or any anything else, right? Just figure out, why are these delay here? As you can see here, this is the CGA script responsible for the for the for the for the uh, updating, let's say, configuration of the of, of the router itself. Then, the strange thing is here that you can see the MAC address of the true IP DMZ here, right? But it's not on the GUI. Why it's not on the GUI? Because it's display none. <laughs> <laughs> Just delete. <laughs> Just delete the display none. <laughs> Come on. Right? Then you will have a MAC address input, but it's disabled. So another security check, right? So they disabled the, you cannot have the input, right? But we have a solution for that. So if you search again, you you're going to see here that is disabled, 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 right? Just change the box to enabled, and then you can put your MAC address, right? And just click OK, and you just bypass their non-logical wish to not having you are, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, yeah, this was very easy besides <laughs> of the breaking the botnets, I, I agree. But yeah, I, it's my fundamental right, right? To have my own connection and stuff like that, so. So then, of course, I reported to them a uh, couple of ma mails back and forth. I think that they patched, but if you have an older version of the firmware, this will, this will still works. Uh, yeah, this is a disclosure, and they sent me some flowers at home, <laughs> <laughs> and they give me some free packages. So I have, have, I have mo more IPTV packages at home, more Dutch channel, which I don't understand, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was all for tonight. Uh, I'm really sorry again for the very white, bright display. So if you have any questions, guys, feel free to ask me or to reach me out with an email. Yes, you have the microphone here. Uh, for the questions, please go to the microphones. Uh, right in front first. Uh, is it enabled? It should be on. Yes. Oh. Oh, yeah. One, two. Yeah, it's okay. I can hear you. Yeah, so uh, the Vodafone hack. It was the parameters in the post request, they were already existing without uh, nothing? Like yes, it's already the there. They're just hiding from the CSS, from the rendering. Right, so if you just run, uh, like when generally just uh, checking Can you please the bottom on the site for vulnerabilities, you will just see that uh, the parameters were there and you just modify it and you have your... Yes. Okay, and uh, is there any way to exploit this in any way to gain further knowledge uh, so let me tell you uh, because this this uh, basically what they done is they didn't para they didn't filter and did they, did they didn't make any kind of validation. validation of my comment because my focus was only breach net <laughs> I didn't have a time to check but maybe you can change a DNS maybe you can do more harm right I didn't I didn't have a time so I'm leaving for you guys to dig it in right <laughs> but I, I'm sure that you can do more but for my aim was just to have a net just to have a bridge and to re recover from that. The reward was flowers. Yes, only flowers. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, if you're leaving the room, please.
Hey, um, yeah, thanks for your talk. It was uh, impressive. So, um, so the, the, the malware interfaces, they all look really professional. Um, these guys definitely know what they're doing. They spent lots of time in developing that stuff. So why do you think uh, it, it, you could still compromise those servers? I mean, you, you, you expect that they, they spend some time in that as well. Because so, they, they, they want to, to protect their assets, right? So th that's a good question. Let me tell you. I try to, I try to figure out how they work. Let me put it this way. I try to, I try to make a research against maybe 2,000 CNC servers. I managed to figure out only 20 of them. Okay. Right? So it's heavily, uh, heavily uh, researched, right? And sometimes it's like, sometimes they're... So you know what they were doing? So they're stealing the money. Uh, they're putting on the drop zone. From the drop zone, they're pushing the money. Uh, they're pushing the cr hacked credit card numbers with a cool to another server, right? When I catch them two times, after that, they stop to doing that. So they put a Gmail account where they are using like a drop. So they're stopping. So basically, every time, every single research that we are publishing is improving their way of, of doing the stuff, right? So I agree with you. They are very good. But I, I mean, come on. It's not possible to breach all of them, right? So this is all I got, but they are very, very professional, right? This is a business model, right? This is a model where you can hire and you can build your perfect attack, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, g again, if you're leaving the room early, please be quiet. It will show up on the recording and we don't want that. Uh, are there any other questions left? Um, because we have time. How much time we have? Like 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Yeah. Okay. You show me 10. That was. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, guys? Okay, then I hope that you enjoyed. And sorry again, please take the PDF. You have all this information inside more. And reach me out, I have more stuff to show you, okay? Thank you. <laughs>